At Mission Control in Houston, the first indication of trouble this morning was the loss of temperature sensors on Columbia's left wing, almost as if the plug had been pulled. This was followed within seconds by a series of other problems. Wolf Blitzer joining us live now from the Johnson Space Center in Houston. Wolf. Miles, as you well know, this is a small family, all the people involved in this mission control operation here, and there is tremendous sadness, especially s uh, severe sadness here because the seven astronauts had trained here in Houston at the Johnson Space Center. Their families, by and large, were here. They had spent a long time getting ready for this mission, and everyone here is, uh, 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 as they've said to me, the words can't describe how upset how sad they are at what's going on. It's spontaneous memorial services are erupting even outside the gates of the Johnson Space Center here in Houston, Texas. Now they are urging the public to try to help if they can. They know there are hundreds, perhaps thousands of pieces of debris out there. They know that the public uh, saw the images of the debris landing in central Texas, northern Texas, all over here, all the way over to Louisiana. They are asking, anyone has any film, any video, there's two ways of getting in touch with NASA officials. You can either call them at a number we've been putting up on the screen, 281-483-3388. I'll repeat that, 281 Four eight three 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 eight eight, or you can email them if you believe you have some information that could help the investigators. Their email address is Columbia Images at NASA.gov. Columbia Images, all one word, at NASA.gov. Now, Ed Levandera has been out there in Texas. He's been talking to people who've seen some of the uh, debris. Ed Levandera is joining us now live from uh, Nacogdoches. Ed, tell us what you've seen and what you've heard. Well, Wolf, what we've seen throughout the day is many people, actually closer to the Dallas-Fort Worth area, many people were paying attention to this shuttle landing today, just kind of the course of events today, kind of everything lined up nicely. It was a beautiful day here weather-wise in, in uh, Texas, and many people were able to see one of those uh, uh, great moments where you could see the space shuttle streaking across the state of Texas as, as it was headed toward uh, Florida for its uh, final approach, and so a lot of people watching uh, the live coverage on the local newscast that uh, as the shuttle was streaking overhead here. So that was a, a very strange moment, not something, a very unique moment, I should say, not a chance a lot of people get to see. So we are about three and a half hours southeast of the Dallas-Fort Worth area and about another three hours north of Houston to kind of pinpoint you, and we're in, this, in the center of Nacogdoches, Texas, and this has kind of become a, a, a nerve center, if you will, for a lot of people who have come here. And the reason they're here is this one parking lot is there's just a, a three by three foot piece of debris there and this is very uh, significant of what we've seen and uh, throughout the, the East Texas area and in, in people's uh, backyards driveways sidewalks uh, the back roads of, of East Texas have seen small parts of debris like this scattered all over the place and we've seen uh, the area is cordoned off just like this, and many, many times we've often seen uh, private landowners there doing the same, waiting for authorities to come by and pick up this material. We understand that they're trying to line up the process by how exactly they're, they're going to do this. I've also had a chance to speak with other people who say that they have seen debris in the back of their businesses or in their homes as well, and that uh, I guess there's just so many calls that have been coming into the authorities here in the East Texas area that it's been impossible to get somebody out to all of these locations at this point so far. So there's a lot of work still left to do here, Wolf. And do people understand, by and large, how dangerous it is, these toxic propellants, as they call it, that if anybody gets too close or touches the kind of debris, they could be in trouble? By and large, has that message gotten through? You know, for the most part, I have seen that uh, you'll, be, you'll be driving around a neighborhood and you'll see a debris, a piece of debris on the ground. And what you'll see is a lot of people gathered around, but they'll probably they'll keep a, a safe distance from it, not touching it. A lot of people taking pictures of it. But for the most part, I think that word has gotten out that people should stay away. And it is, of course, the property of the United States government. It would be a crime for anyone to take any of that debris with them. CNN's Ed Levandero is joining us from Nacogdoches in Texas. Thanks very much, Ed. And, Miles, when I throw it back to you, uh, the, as you well know, the investigators want to collect as much of that debris as possible. It's unclear whether they're going to try to recreate as best they can the Columbia, but they do want that debris because there could be some telltale signs what exactly caused this horrible explosion. Miles? Well, Wolf, as you well know, it's not an overstatement to say that this thing could be unlocked, the puzzle could be solved by simply one piece. So we encourage people, if they see pieces, to let NASA know uh, who knows what the significance of that piece might be.
We're going to take a short break, and when we return, we're going to go to Washington, check in with Judy Woodruff, and talk uh, about the president and the political implications of all this as NASA embarks on efforts to fly one day again. And we'll also check in with Lou Dobbs, who is at the Kennedy Space Center, where Columbia left 16 days ago in a blaze of glory. Stay with us.